When was the last time you heard that flying is bad for the climate? When somebody you know didn't fly somewhere, because of climate change? Every day we hear that airplanes emit a lot of greenhouse gases. But are we thinking about the solution to this problem? Of course, the solution different from banning or taxing flights. Today we are focusing on the potential of hydrogen-powered planes, which are expected to make flying environmentally friendly. And let's be clear, the often discussed battery-powered electric plane is not a viable solution as adding batteries, that will allow for a long flight, to a big aircraft would make it 20 times heavier. And it will not change for a long time. That's why the solution is to generate electricity on site. But why hydrogen? Hydrogen is emerging as a promising fuel alternative due to its abundance, zero greenhouse gas emissions during combustion, and high specific energy. However, it presents design challenges, such as the need for cryogenic fuel tanks, which require a reimagining of traditional aircraft designs. Airbus is at the forefront of the green revolution in flying with its Zero-E project, aiming to introduce the first hydrogen-powered commercial aircraft by 2035. They're experimenting with various configurations, including turbofan, turboprop, and blended wing body designs, each catering to different flight ranges and capacities. Airbus is also exploring a fully electrical concept that relies on fuel cells for electric propulsion. These fuel cells work by transforming the hydrogen into electricity through a chemical reaction. In June 2023, Airbus announced the successful test campaign of the most powerful hydrogen fuel cell system designed for an aircraft. The company uses the first A380 ever constructed as a testbed for hydrogen technologies. Smaller companies work on hydrogen-powered planes as well. The American startup Zeroavia successfully tested the modified Dornier 228 without malfunction of the fuel cell during the flight test campaign. Another company, Universal Hydrogen has also successfully tested a 40-seater-8 equipped with one hydrogen-powered engine and is planning to install its technology on larger ATR-72 aircraft. Okay, but how does this technology work? Isn't hydrogen highly explosive? Today, there are two models for powering a hydrogen-powered plane. First are combustion hydrogen planes, these rely on modified engines that use hydrogen as fuel, in an analogous manner to what fuel airplanes are doing today but with less harmful emissions. Liquid or gaseous hydrogen is burned in a modified gas turbine engine to generate thrust. As for now, this is the most likely option for bigger, long-distance planes. In the case of fuel cell hydrogen planes, hydrogen is used to generate electricity within fuel cells, which then act as electric propulsion to the electric motor, which spins the propellers. Heat and water are the only byproducts. This represents the most viable option for smaller, regional planes. As the power is too little for large airliners, but for hydrogen propulsion to work, liquid hydrogen must be stored safely and securely onboard aircraft. Due to hydrogen's unique properties, this can be tricky. For example, tanks need to be insulated to avoid evaporation if heat is carried over into the stored content by factors such as conduction. That's how we come to another important part of hydrogen technology, cryogenic tanks. From a technical point of view, hydrogen is difficult to store, as this gas has a very low density. Storing it at room temperature and pressure is nonsense since it would take up too much space. For example, you would need approximately 3,000 liters of gaseous hydrogen to achieve the same amount of energy as 1 liter of kerosene fuel. The optimal option is to liquefy it at a temperature lower than minus 250 degrees Celsius or minus 420 degrees Fahrenheit. In this case, the cryogenic tank is subjected to lower pressure as a liquid is less compressible than a gas. Deep freeze temperatures also require specialized materials, thicker walls, and sufficient isolation between stacks of cylinders. But hydrogen-powered aircraft is not a new invention. In 1988 the Soviet Tupolev 155 departed for the first time. One of its three engines was powered by hydrogen. 
In the period until the end of the Soviet Union, the Tu-155 took off from Zhukovsky on more than 100 test flights. Unlike today, the fact that the tests were carried out due to economic and not ecological reasons. Russians worried at the time that oil would be very expensive in the 2010s and hydrogen would be much cheaper. However, Tupolev engineers already faced the same challenges as now. Since liquefied hydrogen requires constant cooling, they decided to store it under high pressure. But it would still take space and most of the seats were removed from the plane to make space for the hydrogen tanks. However, the Soviet Union had collapsed and plans were later abandoned. Looking ahead, industry experts predict that hydrogen aircraft could enter the market in the late 2030s and significantly scale the part test conducted in a wind tunnel By in then, the practical approach, which is a substantial portion of aviation's energy demand. The journey towards hydrogen-powered aviation is just beginning, and it promises to revolutionize the skies. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more aviation content.